Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. Today is Wednesday, June 7th, 2023. But before we get into the video at hand, I wanted to make a little bit of an announcement. We were supposed to have Tamara on the channel this morning for you guys, but she has been struggling with um, her vocal cords. She's kind of been had some sickness. Uh, you probably heard it if you watched her last astrological reading for June, which is over on the Rumble channel. You probably heard her voice was a little scratchy. And so we've rescheduled, we've had to reschedule this video a couple of times just because of her voice. Um, and so hopefully she'll be back on this Friday. Fingers crossed she's feeling better um, by Friday. So that's why the video has been a little bit delayed. But I do have all of your questions for her that we'll talk about when she's able to come on the show that's what's going on just so you guys know and i also before we get into the video at hand wanted to once again give a very very big thank you to all of my patrons and my producers here on esoteric atlanta of course as you all know without you guys i would not be able to do what i do you guys are like the original sponsors of this channel and my heart truly truly goes out to you guys it's it's so cool to know that there are people out there that actually watch my videos and not only that but want to help support what i do i truly appreciate you guys and i thank you so much for your continued support as always if that's something you want to do if you want to join our patreon or our producer community, there is a link down in the description box below. And also before we get onto the subject at hand here, once again is a quick word from our sponsor, Asiya. If you are like me, then you love a good face mask. Now I kid you not, I have been obsessed with face masks since I was a teenager. I have memories of being in high school and having slumber parties with my girlfriends and trying different face masks. This has literally been something that I have been obsessed with my whole life. Now the problem with me is that I have very dry skin. So I have to be very, very careful with the type of face mask that I use. Otherwise it will dry my skin out too much and that itself starts to cause some problems. Well, of course, ASEA just released its own face mask. It ran for a trial run last month, and it looks like it's possibly, potentially here to stay. Now, of course, once the mask was released, and they were gonna be doing the mask, I had to order one, just so I could try it out, because again, girl loves a good face mask i was a little bit nervous i'm gonna be honest with you guys i was a little bit nervous that it might dry my skin out but nonetheless i thought what's the harm in trying i've loved all of their face care system i've been using up until this point so let's just try the mask well true story i got the mask in last week and so that night when i got it in i washed my face i put this mask on when you which you leave on for about 10 minutes set my bath up, my, ni my nightly bath, put my Epsom salts in, all that kind of stuff, grabbed my murder mystery book. I'm always reading some murder mystery book. Got in the bath, soaked for like an hour, washed the face mask off, got out of the bath, did the rest of my skin routine, went to bed. Well, the very, very next morning, I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend. We were still in our pajamas super early in the morning, and he reached over, touched my face, and gave me a kiss. And he noticed that my face felt tight. Like I had had like a facelift or like Botox overnight. Now he was not aware that I had done the face mask. He didn't even know that it had come in the mail the day before. And I said, interesting. I literally just did the ASEA face mask and I went to look in the mirror and it had appeared overnight that my skin had tightened. Now, yes, I am 40 years old, so I'm kind of at that hinge age, right? I'm still young, but I'm moving into middle age. And so I am even more aware now about what I do to my skin as I enter into the latter part of my life. Since that first time using it, I've used it a couple of more times. And absolutely, I am feeling a difference. It really feels like I have had just someone pull the skin back. It's unbelievable. And so you can order the mask on its own. I actually have a couple more masks coming to me because I wanted to stock up. That's how good this mask is. Or you can get the bundle along with the brush. Personally, I have not used the brush, nor did I order the brush. I just use my hands. Or if you want, you can order a bundle of either your personal spa day with the with the lotion, which I do have this lotion as well, or you can come over here, the ultimate gift for mom. We know Mother's Day is coming up. 
or if you just want to send your mom a gift because you know what you wouldn't be here without your mama or you could actually just order this for yourself but the mask again the mask is really something special because it really uh, after the first use i noticed a difference and so did my boyfriend so if this is something that you're interested in please look down in the description box below and you will see a link to the asia website where you can read more about the mask or all the other products that are offered by ASEA. If you would like more information on ASEA, what the products can do for you, what products would be best for you, how to get ASEA at a wholesale price, then you can text Bryce Info, B R I C E Info to 321 216 8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to the telephone number 321 216 8047. If you are texting from another country, please make sure you add plus one. 321-216-8047. Not sure if the mask is available in other countries just yet. I know they're planning on releasing it to other countries, but some of the other products are definitely available in other countries. So please just text Bryce Info to the number listed below. Again, all that information is down in the description box. All right, you guys, um, this video is kind of last minute. I got this question, I believe, uh, Monday from a viewer named Kelvin. Now, I've spoken to Kelvin before. Kelvin is awesome. He's really working on getting rid of his his uh, programming as we've all been trying to do during this time and so he's really putting a lot of effort to kind of re-understand himself or understand himself and he asked me he sent me a message on Monday he said I'm still trying to figure out how to tap into my inner self help and when I saw that I thought oh my gosh this is such a great thing to talk about especially for people who are new to true spirituality it's like one of my favorite quotes a religious person is a person who has never seen hell. A spiritual person is a person who's been to hell and back again. And so many people during this time are going through their own personal hell, their own dark night of the soul as we are. As I've been saying, we all obviously, karmically, we all bought a ticket to this hot mess express before we <laughs> took our bodies here um, on this earth. And so now a lot of people are being uh, faced with the harsh reality that everything we as a collective new to be true isn't true and that includes religion and so i wanted to start with this question again because i don't want people panicking about this i know sometimes you know especially if you're coming from like a christian background you've been kind of programmed i believe in my opinion from my own experiences you've been programmed to kind of panic a little bit that that your salvation isn't secure unless you not only just believe in jesus but believe in jesus in the right way right like there's a joke if you're if you did not grow up christian there is a joke within the christian community of all the different denominations like my jesus is better than your jesus i mean it gets really catty and yeah and um Anyway, but um, I, I wanted to kind of address this publicly. Kelvin said I could use his name because I think this, again, is something a lot of people are struggling with. And the first thing I want to say is take a deep breath. Don't panic. All right. You're already you're already saved. Like there's no there's no finish line here. Right. Like even when you one day pass away, your soul will continue and you don't have to worry about having all the answers right now in this life. And in fact, if you've been following our Law of One series or following a lot of uh, Mr. Fox's videos on other channels, third density is a density of choice. You're picking whether you're going to go service to self or service to others. Service to others is the positive path. Service to self is the negative path, or you can call it light and dark, God, Lucifer, whatever vocabulary word you want to label it. Same thing. But this is not the density of knowing. Right. So we're limited in this density to how much we can truly know. Right. The, the, I believe the density of knowing is the fifth density, and that's the de density of wisdom. So we have to go through fourth density before we can get to the fifth density anyway. So I want everybody to take a deep breath. You're not condemned to hell. 
All right. It, it can take as much time as it needs to take. And you don't have to create an inner self. Your inner self has always been there. You've just got to let it come through. Right. And so, again, that's going to take time because you've been programmed to think of salvation as something outside of yourself. When it's not, it's it's gnosis, it's inside of you. And so the first uh, exercise I told Kelvin to do to start to tap into this is to do something very simple. And this is just take three to five minutes a day to sit down in silence and really focus on your inhale and your exhale. If you feel your mind start to wonder, like your mind starts to think about the grocery list or work or your boy problems, whatever it may be, Acknowledge it and then pull it right back into focusing on the inhale and the exhale. And as you start to focus on now, no hyperventilating, don't do this fast, just an inhale and an exhale. And as you start to do that, when you feel that inhale come in, that's the upward rising energy, recognize what's happening to your body in that moment, right? So do you feel your chest expanding? Do you actually feel, can you actually feel the energy and of your body taking like an upward mo movement with the inhale. And then when you exhale, what sensations are you feeling? Do you feel the, the body kind of deflate? Um, the more and more and more you play with your breath, which is a practice called pranayama. Now, if you want to get into deep pranayama work, you need a teacher for that. So just putting that disclaimer out. But you can just sit and do something simple that you're doing right now, which is inhaling and exhaling. Now, when we think about the breath, the breath is kind of this... Um, it's kind of like a hinge between the physical and the spiritual, right? Pranayama is what's controlling your bandhas. It's what controls the energy of the energetic body and the um, physical body at the same time. So like if you are an athlete or if you are a yoga practitioner and you go up into a handstand, right? You're not going to go up into a handstand on an exhale. It's going to be on an inhale. You probably won't be able to lift up if you try to do it on an exhale. And so start to notice those patterns, right? Just start to subtly, because part of knowing the inner self, the true self is recognizing that subtle body. That's the first step. So, wow, okay. So my breath is so important that when I go into a handstand or do anything that's requiring a, a sharp burst of energy, it's an inhale, it's a rising up but when i need to deflate or push energy down it's on an exhale right for women who've had babies you think about pushing that exhale that pushing down and then start to play, pay attention to how the inhale and the exhale the inhale the exhale run up and down the spine if you are a runner pay attention to the runner's breath the runner's breath is a very shallow breath and honestly in traditional yoga when you're doing your posture practice your asana practice it's also a shallow breath too right so how is that shallow shallow breath keeping the adrenaline pumping in your body and keeping your heart rate up because the breath also has to do with your sweat it also has to do with the heart rate you think about fireplaces you know that's i don't know what it's called but that thing that blows air on the fire to make it get bigger right that's what you're doing with your with oxygen intake into your body um again the sanskrit word for this practice is pranayama prana is life force yama is extension extending the life's capacity through breath um even even in the Bible, it says God breathed life into man and man stood up. Um, breath is so important. And so start with that first. There's nothing, there's no like golden star sticker you're going to get for, for doing this exercise in a particular way. It's just an observation. And if five minutes is too much when you first start, if your mind wanders too much, try two minutes, try three minutes. It doesn't have to be like an hour. It can just be two minutes of you noticing that and then go about your day. Another thing to do is, again, exercise, literally exercise. So when you put yourself in, and, and if you're new to exercise, you know, you're not going to be doing the, the same amount of exercise as someone like me would do because I've been doing this for 17 years, right? So 10 minutes, 20 minutes, get your heart rate up for 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Notice can you be the witness to what's happening instead of being the judge and the jury and the executioner? Can you just be the witness? So instead of reacting to your reactions of what's happening in exercise, can you just observe it? For example, 
when you start to get into exercise and you start sweating and you start to feel your muscles burning, your brain, your mind is going to start to negotiate with you. You should stop. Wow, this is uncomfortable. You should quit. Or it might even try tricks like, hey, you know, you really need to start the laundry right now. Right at this very moment, you need to go start a load of laundry. Right? My, that's what my brain does to me a lot. I'll be right in the middle of my practice and all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I need to go start laundry right now at four o'clock in the morning. Right? That's just the brain trying to negotiate with you because the body is uncomfortable. So what I would tell you to say is when you notice that, just say thank you for Thank you for your thoughts. Interesting that you think that, but keep going. Because when you're on the precipice of change, so right when there's about to be a change that occurs, and when we're exercising, the body is literally sweating and burning, kind of like a compost pile. It's burning old patterns. And these old patterns of thought, because the body is the mind field. So all the thoughts that you've had in your life, especially repetitive thoughts that you might not even be aware of, start to create patterning within the body, which creates an energetic response. And this patterning becomes bondage for you. So getting through the bondage into the inner self becomes harder and harder and harder. Now the brain, the thought, the mind is connected to the ego. And the ego is the false sense of self. The ego has purpose. There is purpose on a very practical um level of understanding for example the ego is what's going to get you to pay attention when you cross the road so you don't get hit by a car the ego is what's going to tell you not to touch the stove when it's turned on right but when you're in something like exercise the ego knows that what you're doing is you're repatterning thoughts really essentially through your body you're repatterning ways of your perception of the world and the ego knows that once you understand that your thoughts are not you and they're not real and the ego isn't real, then the ego has no power over you, right? And so it's going to fight to stay relevant. Uh, Ram Das has said, especially when you're right at the precipice of having an ego death, the ego will become really forceful. And so what you need to do when that starts to happen, especially in physical exercise, when your legs are shaking, they're burning and your mind's going, you should really stop now. You just say, okay, interesting that you're reacting this way. Note taken, but I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I know it's uncomfortable, but it's not. This too is going to pass. I'm just going to hang with this. See if at that moment when you feel like you should quit, see if you can just go one more minute in the exercise. And then once that minute is over, see if you can go another minute. Slowly pass, passing, pass, putting yourself past that point of comfort. Because if you want change and if you want to understand your inner self, you're not going to be able to do that unless you actually enact change. Yeah, there's no magic pill. There's no bippity boppity boo that's going to come around and all of a sudden, prati va, flash of illumination. You're going to understand your inner self. You're going to have to go through the process of the compost pile of deconstructing your own ideas through the minefield, which is the body. I hope that makes sense. So again, this is just where you start 20 minutes, some exercise. Once 20 minutes is over, journal about how you feel two to three minutes, up to five minutes of, of observing your breath. And another thing that you can do too, that um, Sri Swami Sachitananda recommends in his commentary of the Yoga Sutras. And this is something Shanti and I spoke about on Monday on Aquarius Rising Africa. So one of the big, uh, major crux, the crux of spirituality, essentially, is um, the idea of the body and the soul being two separate things. And I think in an abstract way, we do understand that in a very abstract way. But what I think we don't truly get is that the soul or the Atman, the part of you that's eternal, has absolutely nothing to do with your identity in this life. So like my in this life so like my soul or my ottoman isn't bryce bryce is just an experience for this life and so something sri swami Satitananda recommends doing when you're first starting to really process this is like if you are hungry instead of saying i'm hungry say 
oh, my body's hungry. Or if somebody hurts your feelings, just say, oh, interesting, my mind reacted that way. So that you start to kind of, in an abstract way, understand the two are not the same. Yeah? So you can understand that what, what, what you really are, who you truly are, is the watcher. You're just watching the experiences of this roller coaster ride that we call life, this experience. And that who I am as Bryce is just an, an emotional experience for me to understand that's not really me, if that makes sense. Okay, so I know that's, that's really heavy philosophy. Again, you don't have to understand it all at once. You just start with the very basics of, oh, my body is hungry. Or, oh, my body needs to go to the bathroom now. Or, oh, my body is tired, so I'm going to let my body sleep now. Yeah? Um, and then again, doing the exercises so you understand the patterning of your body coming from thought that is trapping the inner self, the soul, and not letting it fully express itself, and then watching the breath. Um, and I hope that makes sense. Again, there's no finish line to this. So there's no rush to try to understand this right away. Um, I, I'll say again, I know I've said this many times on the channel before, but I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. In the yoga world, we have this joke where we say the easiest students to teach are the beginner students and the advanced students because both the beginner student and the advanced student know that they know nothing. It's the intermediate student that thinks they know everything. So you want to come to that place of accepting that you don't really know anything. All you know is that you're an eternal soul. Yeah. In the yoga sutras too, that leads like to one of the, the rules of, of yoga is having complete surrender to God, that you're completely surrendered. It, do, it doesn't mean that you don't stand up for yourself. It doesn't mean that you don't protect yourself. In fact, not protecting yourself, not standing up from yourself is putting you on a negative path of being the martyr where you need to experience the ride, the roller coaster of, so as Bryce, I have to protect myself. That's part of the roller coaster experience of, of learning that strength as a human so that my soul can reflect on that. But my permanent soul, my Atman is, is, is not that. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I know it's so abstract and it's such a, um, the first time I was ever confronted with this philosophy, and I've always been very open-minded as a person. I've always really just been very open-minded. But this was in the beginning of my yoga journey. And I was I was uh, taking um, a course with David Grieg, and there was a uh, conference where he lectured, basically, and he talked about this. And I remember just going home that night and just crying because everything that I thought was real from my growing up in the Presbyterian church, all of a sudden I realized was not real because what he was saying resonated. And it was really scary to have to, to think of life in a very different way, to think about everything that you'd been taught isn't necessarily true. Um, I hope that makes sense. So don't, don't panic. There's going to be ups and downs and you just every day, you know, if you have a bad day, you know, say you have a really bad day and you just say, okay, well, Interesting that I've responded this way. Interesting that I've, I've, um, I've been triggered by some stuff, right? Why? Why am I triggered? And start to work that way as well. And over time, you know, when we first get students in yoga, I know that a student is very aware of their gross body. They're very aware of their quadriceps. They're very aware of their biceps. They're very, very aware of their back. But they have no clue. They have no tapping into the subtle body. And But that only comes over time where you can feel the subtle responses deep within the body. Yeah? So just, just be patient with yourself and know that there's nothing you have to achieve. There's nothing that has to be given to you because you already have it. It's already there. It's just you deprogramming, basically, allowing the mind to take a back seat so that the soul, the spirit, and the subtle body can be the, at the forefront. Yeah. So don't panic. Again, I'm going to reiterate this. There's nothing that you have to achieve. There's no finish line. You already have everything you need. It's already there. As I told Kelvin, when I first met him, he asked me, so if, if Jesus, I'll paraphrase what he asked me on the show. He said, so if Jesus wasn't crucified, how do we get salvation? And my, my answer was, why, why do you think you weren't already saved? You were born saved. You were born. If you want to use a Christian terminology, you were born into salvation. 
you don't need to bow down to a death cult in order to be granted salvation from some human being that wears a black robe right black robes is the cult of satan anyway that's them telling you that they're in the cult of satan you're already saved when you look at two-year-olds three-year-olds four-year-olds children that are so young that there's no concept of religion in their mind they know god they don't need anybody to tell them who god is they already know god can you go back to that place of where you just knew yeah Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Um, once again, I this morning I will be over on uh, Solutions with Aquarius Rising Africa at eleven thirty Eastern Time. Uh, it's New York time. If you're if you're from another time zone, uh, join us live. We're going to be going back into Green Tara from the Sophia Code um, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow Thursday I'll be with Catherine Edwards again on my channel. We'll be doing our show and drawing names for the giveaway. Um, hopefully tomorrow we'll be back on on Friday. We we'll also have an episode coming up again with Mr. Fox, and I am still working on a series of narcissistic abuse. I've gotten such great feedback from you guys regarding narcissistic abuse and narcissistic abuse is becoming very prevalent right now. It's very obvious, which is kind of amazing and maybe mr fox can talk about this as well because as we get closer to the timeline shift the ascension or the harvesting as they call it in the law of one we're starting to see narcissists for who they are like it's becoming so obvious as to who's going in what path and what direction and so um in order to keep yourself safe i would say always research as i t tell you most of the time research everything research everything every person um, some people are not who they say they are, um, and they're developing a cult following. And and just be careful you're not following, you're not taking on a new leader that's going to lead you down um, a dark and dangerous path. Just be your own leader and um, take everything everybody says with a grain of salt, including me, and do your own research. Come to your own conclusions. That's the journey that you're on. And as I've said many times, no one's coming to save you, and that's your privilege. It's you are that much of a badass and a powerhouse that you don't need anybody to save you because you already have everything you need inside of you to do it yourself. And if you allow somebody to save you, if you allow them to take care of you, then you allow them to control you. All right. So take your power back. Anyway, love you guys. And um, I'll talk to you soon.